Well, hi, good morning. Thanks so much for joining me here in my shop so I'm not all alone with this monstrously large radio here. And uh, I think today what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to get it to operate. That's a bit of a challenge here. I don't have the correct speaker to go with it. I don't have it right now. And uh, that's a bit of a challenge. Um, but I think it's worth trying. Uh, my philosophy on this is the sooner you can get something happening with these radios, the better off you are. And if you can get something happening right from the start, uh, before you start making changes to the radio, changing parts and whatnot, you're way, way ahead. And you know what? There is something here I never really sorted out, and that's this little switch here. Which you won't worry about now. Uh, so, to power this up, rather than use the power supply that's built into the radio, I'm going to use a bench supply. You can kind of see it up here. This guy here. He can supply B+. He can also supply 6.3 volts for heaters, but I may, I may let the radio supply its own heater uh, voltage. So that's about, and then the only other solution I need to come up with is how to make the uh, speaker operate don't need the field coil since I won't be running the high voltage power supply in here. Uh, in fact, to disable the power supply completely in here, if I just pull out the rectifier tube, and also with the field coil missing, uh, there's no chance of this radio developing B+. There's no chance without the rectifier and casting it through the radio. The only source of B+, can be something external, like my power supply. Okay, uh, step uh, one. Why don't we resolve the speaker first? What I need to do with the speaker is uh, ignore the field windings, the field coil windings, the field coil leads, and pay attention to the voice coil. Now, the uh, plug is right, I think it's right here. buried under here. There should be really no more than four wires coming to it. Two for the field coil and uh, two for the voice coil. Field coil is involved with the power supply filter so here's the filter here. Capacitors and here is a wire going straight straight over. This is probably uh, part of the field coil circuit. Uh, I see a bare wire here. Uh, it's connecting two, a bare wire connecting two of those terminals together. Uh, often they arrange this. So if you pull out the speaker, you are in a sense opening a switch. Now, uh, it sounds like, well, yeah. <laughs> open circuits in the circuit in the circuit. I think they're doing something a little more here with this short. I'm not sure. But I think that's kind of the idea. Um, and that would also be the high voltage stuff. Now the voice. So I see I see two black wires heading down in there. Uh, unfortunately they're blocked by this big big honking resistor. Um, there's always a chance that the radio designers are using spare terminals on any socket for a terminal just as a spare terminal which is very misleading for someone like me examining the circuit and trying to sort things out well let's see another way of looking at this so there's a red wire here it comes to the top of this big resistor top or bottom uh, I see a 450 volt capacitor here with the positive lead tied to the same terminal and a red wire. It all suggests high voltage again. So that, that would mean this terminal with that short uh, bare wire and this terminal are the high voltage ones. The lower voltage ones would be that's uh, very tricky seeing in here because of these resistors just blocking so much 
So do these two go to the same spot? Same kind of wire? It's coming, coming to the uh, volume control here. Put a tab on it. So this could be a bit of feedback. I, I think uh, I'm starting to see this in radios where to produce the uh, feedback effect they're looking for. Um, and this is a uh, technique for reducing distortion and whatnot. You feed a little bit of the output signal back, back right into the amplifier. It's, it's a feedback thing. Uh, the result of that is a huge improvement in distortion if it's done right. I mean, yeah, it's not a simple thing. It has to be done right. That's probably what this is. And that's probably why it's hooked up the same place as these wires. Uh, I don't know what other wires are going in there. There's got to be more. There's got so... Ah, this darn resistor is just blocking everything. How else can I figure out which one is the... Uh, could figure it out by looking back. Yeah, looking back from the speaker. I don't have the speaker. I can't do that. Uh, maybe a schematic. Hey, a schematic may may oh, a schematic may tell me all. Let's take a look and see if I can find it here. Okay, very fortunate here. Uh, I've got a wiring diagram. This is not terribly common, but wow, is this ever going to be helpful? So the area we're looking at is down around here this uh, it's not quite as easy as I had hoped okay so I've got a piece of the schematic uh, that relates to the uh, area actually it's not really the schematic it's the wiring diagram and uh, I've got it arranged here so it pretty much matches the radio above although it's, it's still tricky to go ahead and do this so let's just kind of match up a few parts here and uh, I'm still in the mode of getting familiar with this radio so uh, so I don't mind spending time just looking at stuff and realizing things I haven't realized yet so we'll start with this big dog bone resistor here um, so I'd have to guess not really a guess diagram we have this two water right here so you see where they're showing it they're showing it off to the side again that, that's for uh, diagram purposes for uh, uh, drafting purposes there's another big one here that would be probably half the wattage of this one and we can see on the diagram another one right here a one water it's probably that one Okay, the next part we can see is a capacitor right here, C46, and uh, it's probably this one, C46. Yeah, I'm looking where the wires are running from the capacitor and the diagram. Yeah, it's this one. And then there's another another capacitor on the other side of the, in the diagram right here, C48. That's a little harder to see. That's this guy up here. Looks like he's got something coming out of the bottom. Of him. Okay, so those are the components that kind of match up. Uh, let's see, we can see some more stuff here. Uh, we see a lot of stuff. We see this resistor. We see one leg going to ground. And that, that's this resistor here. So again, it's, it's, you know, the, the diagram has been drafted to make it uh, visually easy to communicate. Well, the way the radio is wired is not easy <laughs> to visually communicate. Not like that. You, know, you will find some radios where the wiring is done, uh, I don't know what to call it, a military style or something where the wires are brought across, everything is right angled and uh, either up and down or left and right and there's nothing like this going on. Um, those are made to be visually easy to look at and to see stuff. What about these two capacitors now? Are, are these on there? Um, so they go to this this piece here, uh, terminal strip, and you can see on the diagram, right? There's a terminal strip there. 
right here, and there's two capacitors, one to ground and one over to uh, whatever this thing is. It looks like another capacitor. So, well, these are both going to ground. Oh, no, it's it's this one. So this, this one, do they give the value in there? They do. They do. One's an 05 and one looks like a 0.5, I would guess. From my eight, yeah, eight to the top of the resistor, and this one is a. That's a point five. Point five, and then the other one is this paper one up here, which is hard to see—a small, just a regular size one. So this is probably not electrolytic. She's a big whopper, point five. And it's on the schematic. Now, is this one on the schematic? This goes to the top of the resistor here, uh, or on the diagram. So that'd be a third capacitor. Uh, I don't think so. Doesn't look like it. And this, this other capacitor was coming up to some weird stuff, so it's not really weird. There's a capacitor back here. It's hard to see. It looks like a, no, that's a resistor. That's a dog bone resistor there. And then up here we've got a little small capacitor and the bigger one over here. Kind of stuck on the, across the volume control terminals. Yeah, and that's exactly how it's done on the diagram. So, okay. Hey, you know what would be interesting is to look at that uh, tube situation where an alternate tube has been uh, put in. Let's, let's stick with what we're doing, and then we can do that afterwards. So what are we doing? So we're trying to convince me, I'm trying to convince me that I know which pins on this speaker output are the voice coil pins, without any doubt. Okay, this great big resistor's going down here. So I don't think, there's just no doubt, this is a high voltage. And I'm pretty sure this one's a high voltage. Sort of the, the the negative way of becoming certain about something. I, I know what it. I know what I know what's not what I want. Um, so there's a, a a connection here, and it would look like just just one one one. How can there be one? There got to be two. Where's that diagram? Okay, so we look at the diagram. Oh my gosh, it really isn't all that great, is it? Uh, I'm thinking this pin, which is coming from the uh, output tube, and I'm thinking this pin are the voice coils, or, or the audio signal. Think, man, it's sent to Jim, it's sent to an output transformer. There's no voice coil signal here. Oh, right. The uh, output transformer is on the speaker, which I don't have. Oh, so I can, this is wrong, 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 wrong. I've been looking for something that doesn't exist. So what really exists is the plate circuit of the output tube passing through here, too. And that would explain why there's a red wire here coming from the tube. Okay, I think I got my head screwed on a little better now. So that's what's available, is the... That means with the speaker unplugged, the output tube is disabled also. Because the plate circuit is interrupted. Is that right? Is that right? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, what am I gonna do? <laughs> I'm excited to start zooming things around on my screen. Uh, I'm gonna put the schematic up here. Well, I think I can thank one of my viewers, Garrett, for sending me this uh, fantastic resource. This is just from a website, Radio Service Manual. If you look very carefully, that's the radio right there, 1029. X, that guy right there, and I'm fairly certain I have the cabinet for this radio 
sitting in my shed in horrible condition. No parts in it, just the cabinet. I'm pretty sure that's what this is. Which was forced upon me at a yard sale and the kindly old lady wanted to unload this on me. So I, I have this cabinet. Interesting. So, 1029. All these beauties here. Okay, here we go. So we're just going to work our way down to 1029, which isn't too far down here. Here we are, 1029. Okay, so let's let's study up on the uh, what we're interested in here, which is the schematic and speaker plug, which is not not made apparent in the schematic at all. Sometimes they do that right in the schematic bill. They'll, they'll make the plug apparent, but it's not here. Hmm. So, wire. So really what we want to do, we want to take the output of the 6L6 plate circuit this isn't here in my house. So I'm going to take this. Oh my gosh. You know what, what might be better? Sneak a signal off the grid here and feed it to a separate amplifier and uh, speaker completely separate and just listen to what's here. That's going to be good enough for me, I think. Listen to what's here. Pull this tube out. With the plug out, this field coil is missing. I'll feed in B plus right here for my own supply, and uh, and we'll let the uh, transformer here power the heaters through this and all these all these dial lights too. But this will be defunct, and this will be defunct. I think that's going to work. So I'm part way through the process here of trying to figure out where to inject the B plus from my bench power supply. And uh, so here's that big long resistor. And I'm going to guess one end or the other is getting B plus and that's a place where I could hook, hook up and inject my, my B plus. That's what I'm thinking. So if we follow so the positive end of a big capacitor right here. So wire, the red wire, look at it, it goes right to the uh, terminal for the speaker. The other end here, the resistor, yellow wire, this yellow wire is coming to the shell of this capacitor. This capacitor it's insulated. So can you see the white insulator there? Maybe you can't see it. There's a white insulating piece here. This one? No, this one's right onto the chassis. On the schematic you can see that. And you can see that the shell of this one is running at, at B plus. So it's all it's all kind of adding up here. This is the B plus injection point, top of this resistor. If I stick B plus in here, it should cascade throughout the radio just like it would ordinarily. Can't go backwards into the power supply because I pulled the tube out. There's something about the fuse here too, because I want the power the transformer in here to power the heaters in the tubes. This is my audio connection. The black lead is just going to the chassis here. A nice convenient spot. And then this is going to the grid of the output tube, which I extracted. There's no output tube here. So the grid's coming through. I just have a capacitor here because I'm a chicken. And then this just runs to this uh, Heathkit amplifier I built in college. I kind of did these upside down. Uh, I built a number of these. And these were used by my fellow students in our housing co-op to run the uh, FM radio station that we had going there. I'm not sure. <laughs> go into details about it. 
But I did. You think I do crazy things in my shop? You know, a lot of the crazy things I do actually work out. Uh, actually, you don't see a lot of the crazy, crazy stuff because I do that at night. Uh, I let my freak flag fly in here. I just do wild, stupid stuff, and uh, once in a while. So this guy here has got to be plugged in to the wall. He is plugged in. Volume down, volume down. So the idea is. This guy is going to get the uh, grid signal from the output tube, and it's going to amplify it and shoot it to this speaker. has its own volume control and a manipulated tone control. That's what's going on there. So getting back to here, my uh, power supply, which is just sitting up right there, not switched on yet, has a red and a black wire coming out of it. The black wire is hooked up to the chassis here, and the red wire is the one that I've been pondering where to clip it, and I think it should go here. Okay, I've also studied the schematic a little bit, so I'm quite reassured this is the spot. That's probably why I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, the spot's down here. Down here. Of course, I can control the output voltage of my power supply, and also it... Uh, also has a current meter so I can see what kind of drain is coming on. That's one of the reasons for doing this, is to find out if there's a short in the high voltage systems of the radio. Rather find it out with a power supply than turning the radio on and find, finding it out that way. Fuse. I still have to deal with the fuse. So I have the 30 amp fuse, but there's no way I'm going to use it. I really do want to put a better sized fuse in there. These little ones aren't going to make it. Okay, I've got to dig some fuses out and get that done. Okay, these ones look like they're the right length. So, uh, in this radio, uh, gee, did it did it say what the fuse was on the schematic? That did, 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 did it? It did say, didn't it? Didn't it say? And I missed it. Let me look quickly on my own here. Fuse 0.2 amps is what it says on the schematic. So we take a point like a 0.5 amp, I think we'll just we'll be just fine. 0.2 sounds ridiculously low, doesn't it? Okay, that's all there is to that. And it was this the fuse was in this lower one, and I'm just gonna go for that. Now don't break the glass. That fits properly, as opposed to the automobile fuse, which was actually a little bit long. And I'm sure that's by design, to make sure people don't do exactly what was done here. Good. Um, conceivably, that 30 amp fuse has caused some of their fault to burn something out in here, but that's that's you know that's conceivable. <laughs> I don't think it's true though. Just because you conceive of something, doesn't make it true. So speaker switch is on. Power's off here. Power's off on the power supply. Um, order, order of things. So the switch here, does it need to be on? It needs to be on. I need to plug this guy in. And so order of operations would be first turning this on with nothing else operating, seeing if the tubes heat up the way I suspect they will based on its built-in transformer. Um, so let me get the plug here. And again, if you're new to my videos, um, when, I, when I plug equipment in on my bench, it's not going right into the uh, wall outlet. It's going through a transformer on the way there. Where you look at it the other way, the power getting here is coming through an isolation transformer. And that, that removes the... Uh, ground relativity, I don't know how to put it, uh, yeah, I guess the hydro or power system ground, the water piping grounding, all that kind of stuff, is isolated away from the power being delivered to the radio here, which means I could put my sock foot on the floor here and grab the power wire coming to my bench, coming to here, and I should not get a shock, but I will not do that, 
<laughs> I don't know. If I really wanted to prove things, I wouldn't use me as the uh, test case. Um, but that's a theory. The isolation should keep me safe from getting a ground 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 fault type shock. I still get shocks with you know two hands in here and stuff like that. Uh, the other thing is I can control the uh, voltage coming here, and I don't get confused. I'm not talking about the big the supply up here. I'm talking about 120 volts. You know, I can control it in a fairly crude way using these lights back here. So what I'm doing, this light is loose. This 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 one, this other one, if you can't see it, this one here is screwed in tight. All the power reaching the radio from my isolation transformer, which you can see here actually, the isolation transformer is right down there, uh, will go through that light bulb. That will restrict the, the power a little bit, provided the amount of power being drawn by the radio is also a little bit. If the radio has a short in it, like the power supply transformer has a short in it, and the thing tries to pull you know, all the power out of Niagara Falls, then instead of that happening, this light will come on really bright. It may come on a little bit as it is, but it will come on fully bright if there's a big short in here, and I will have saved Niagara Falls. Because, you know, if you let a short actually get applied to Niagara Falls, the water will actually go backwards up the falls. You, you can't be responsible for that kind of thing. Okay, uh, right, so we're gonna we're gonna energize this through the light bulb. This switch is still gonna turn on and off the uh, still gonna turn things on and off. So let's make this off. We'll make sure off is off first. Uh, I have a little box plugged into the outlet. This is my actual bench outlet. I have this box plugged in which will tell me lots of interesting things about the power going into the radio here. Tell me the voltage right at the outlet here, and also tell me uh, how much power this thing is drawing, how many watts, and stuff like that. Even volt amps, I think it even shows volt amps, which is it's a cool little box. Help you learn the truth about how much power your vacuum uses. You know, plug your vacuum into one of these. And find out the truth. Let the truth be known. But don't worry about your vacuum. You only use it for a few minutes. That's not the power eater. That's not what you're paying for. You're paying for your refrigerator. Okay. <laughs> I'm all over the map here. That's because I'm tense about applying power. And I'm, I'm just skittish. by actually following through on this. As I should be. Once again, switch is off. Volume is down here. Not that it, well, it might matter. This, this AFC on off switch is off. This tone control is where it is, but we don't know what band we're on. We don't know what band we're on. That doesn't really matter at this point. Anyway, I have no antenna hooked up, but we're really looking for smoke and flames at this point. Not, not really expecting too much else. I can turn on my little amplifier here, which will start indicating, which will start indicating if uh, something's happening with at the output. Uh, it'll indicate it with a hum, a noise, a sound. Beautiful music being played from the radio. But the volume is down right now. Let's turn it up and see what it sounds like. Not much. Just a bit of a hum there. Just letting anything pop into my head that needs to pop in there. Okay, so if some of you are screaming at your screens right now, don't do it, Jim, don't do it. I can't hear you. I cannot hear you. So let's get an eye on the light. If the light comes on really bright, we're, we're, we will stop. Okay, i got to reach over the top of the camera here a little bit. Here we go. I added the sound effect there. So nothing has happened that we can see. And we look down here. That's full voltage, 123 volts. There's no load being drawn by this radio. And that's good because it's turned off. Now I'm going to turn the power off. Just because I'm so queasy about these things. Turn the radio on. This time, we, we may or may not see that light come on a little bit. Here we go. One thing I did see is the panel light came on up here, which, whoops, that's not the camera. <laughs> this light came on. So, hey, we know which band we're on. 
and we know that things are working in terms of producing the 6.3 volts to run the light all the tubes should be heating up too well, how can we see that? I got the radio turned around the wrong way here okay very carefully rotate right they're all metal tubes okay so this one I can see the heater the heater is on in here so that's thumbs up on getting the heater to work you know what I forgot to do is put all these grid caps back on this radio will not work without them I meant to do that I thought I was going to change the grid cap wires but I haven't done that yet Now there's no B plus in this radio, so all that's happening is the heaters are running. It actually feels a little bit warm already. I'll look down here too. No, there's no B plus, so there cannot be any glow in the eye. I spent uh, about 20 minutes before I turned the video on this morning trying to stabilize the eye in some bracket arrangement here. And you can see I did not have success. <laughs> I gave up. Okay, so the next step is to apply the high voltage. Um, and that should start, we should start hearing stuff come out of this radio of some sort. Which, now we, we're on this band. This is really a bad band to be on. The band to be on is really the broadcast band. Let me turn the band switch. That'll be this guy. Um, Put a tool on it. Okay, so if you're going to tool one of these, if you if you put the tool on like I'm holding it, you have tremendous leverage here, right? So you can overpower something pretty easily. So it's much better to put it on this way. You still have more leverage than the knob, but it's more in line with what the knob feels like. Okay, you can see the light move up there. So, two lights are burned out, but I'm sure we're on the broadcast band now. This thing has gone all the way to one side, matches the other similar radio I, I just worked on a couple of weeks ago. Same sort of arrangement. What are we likely to see here? Um, smoke, fire, flames. Yeah, maybe not likely to see any of that. Let me put this here. I think I think watching the front. Well, from here I can I can just rotate the radio. And also, I think I can't get my camera up quite high enough, can I? There. So I, I want to be able to see these two meters on the panel. Okay, don't get confused. That's a TV image up there. That's not the radio. And we'll be recording what, what time it was when the disaster occurred. Okay, volume up. So about halfway here. And power on. Now this is on it's on standby. It has tubes in it that need to warm up. It has its own power supply, of course. So this this meter measures the milliamps. I know you can't read the uh, scale. And this reader reader, this meter reads the voltage. So the scale on this meter is uh, 100, 200, 300, 400 at the top. And the scale on this meter is uh, this red line you can see, the red mark. Don't go over that for any length of time anyway. 100 milliamps. That's 100 milliamps. That's what this guy's capable of. I shouldn't have left that up. Shame on me. Bad, bad deal. I left up the, volume, the voltage control. But that's okay. It's still on standby. So when I flip the switch here, it will go on. And then I will start increasing the B plus. I can watch this meter go up but my eye will be on this meter because I'm worried that something's wrong in the radio and there's a short or something and the power is just gonna shoot through the radio 
if I don't watch this carefully, I'll damage my power supply. Then we'll get this up to around, say, 200 volts. That should be enough to make things work. We should hear something coming out of the speaker at any moment during this. The sound may come out of the speaker of some sort. Who knows what? There we go. So a hum came out of the speaker, a slight hum. That's just probably just engaging this power supply a little bit. If the radio is working, we should hear radio hissy sounds. I've got no antenna on it. Let me put it's easy. Let me put the antenna on it here because uh, we, we should have some kind of input into this radio. Just trying to sort out which is which here. Antenna. That might be a good sign. I'm not sure. It doesn't really sound like radio sounds, does it? It's just not making a very good connection this way. Funny it would go quiet. Okay. The volume higher on the speaker here. There's a little bit of a hiss there. We got no voltage yet, so really the radio cannot work. I'm, I'm too optimistic. But full volume, we'll start raising this. Watching this meter. Here we go. So, so what I, I'm seeing with this one is, as I raise the voltage a little bit, it comes up a bit, and then it relaxes. If I don't raise the voltage more, that's a charge going into capacitors. That's good. Okay, we're nearing 50 volts. Okay, so on here we've got about uh, 10 milliamps. You hear something coming out of the speaker. That's 100 volts. These radios typically run around 250. It's 150 volts. jumping around a bit. What, what was that? I just jumped a bit. 25 milliamps. You can hear the buzz. Now that could actually be a received buzz by this radio. This radio could actually be working at this point. So I think with uh, 150 volts is enough to start filling around here. Well, let's leave this here. Let's leave this here. Take the radio, and we're going to tune it, and we'll see if anything funny happens. Good stuff. Not funny. Good stuff. Funny stuff's happening. Okay, a few other things to uh, fiddle with. First, the volume on here is, is, is still uh, minimal. Uh, doesn't seem to do anything. And what else could be I'm mucking this up? Tone control, I wouldn't expect so. Makes a difference. That's interesting. This must be another tone control here. Think about volume, volume, volume should should be working. The volume should work. Sounds a little louder when I have it turned down. Okay, where are we at now? We're still at 25 milliamps and 150 volts. Maybe we gotta go a little higher on the B plus. In case you want to know who, who one of the people who worked on this chassis 
There's his number, 1215, right here. Mr. 1215 did that. I don't have a number. I need a number. So, uh, let's see. We can do a little bit of really simple signal injection by touching the uh, two caps. Okay, turning the volume down too. The reaction there, but it's not quite what I would expect. Turning down the volume again. So I think this tube is involved with that AFC circuit. I don't know for sure. Turn down the volume again. You know what I forgot? I just realized. There's a tube missing. <laughs> okay. We're going to start the whole procedure over again. Power off. Volume down. Switch off on the radio. Tube in. <laughs> right, this is the tube that's rewired and we can see the socket was rewired. So, ready to go again. A little bit of volume up. And this tube has to heat up a bit. I turn the power off. Power back on. No dim bulb action. Actual voltage reading reaching the radio is 122 volts, which is normal voltage for the heaters. Volume's up. B plus, I left it. You know, I left it. I forgot to crank it down. I left it up there. Interestingly enough, the B plus is at 150 and the current has dropped in half. Volume is full on here, on the uh, amplifier and on the radio. Radio switched off. <laughs> That's why you didn't see this heater come on. Okay, volume down here, power on. That would also explain the uh, weak, weak draw on the uh, on my power supply up here. So the draw is going up a little bit. Just getting up. 150 volts, just under 25 milliamps slowly increasing a touch. Good. So it's basically the same as it was. Volume up. A little bit of a different buzz this time. What's the buzz? Tell me what's happening. Volume up on the radio. So I believe we should be hearing something now. We're certainly not. Okay, I'll do the grid cap tap again. You know, this is a this tube is related to the AFC. That's right. These two are doing the AFC thing. So maybe having it out of there didn't make any difference anyway. Maybe that's the case. Okay, checking for Should not making much noise. Now this is the this 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 last tube I've been avoiding here. So this tube's output is driving the grid that we're listening to. That's what I believe is going on anyway. So I touch this, we should hear it. Volume down on the amp. Not a thing. So I, maybe I've just got this wrong in terms of what I'm listening to. Why, why couldn't I listen to that grid? Isn't that grid on this tube carrying the audio. I can't remember. So we're going to just revert to the schematic here. Just one sec. Okay, and I wanted to figure out what that tube is doing. Which tube? Ay, 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 ay. Tube would be um, at the 
the back behind the capacitor. At the back. Oh my god, look at this thing. Look at this diagram. Uh, trouble relating to it. Is there, is there another one? There. There's one. There you know, that's a little better. Okay, so looking at this, it's this tube. 6J7. One of two 6J7s. Over close to here. So I think that's audio on this on this wire. 6J7. The 6J7 is oh wait a minute. Am I looking at this right schematic? <laughs> There's a 6J7, it's an oscillator. There's another one, 6J7. What, 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 what's this involved with? Oscillator something or other. Maybe this is the B plus coming in? No. This is not the magic eye. No, that's the magic eye there. Two 6J7s, so it's the oscillator output. Whoa! Oh my gosh. Six F5 audio. Well, I'm really, I'm really turned around on this radio. So the six F5 audio is the one that's been replaced. So when I had that two out, no audio could, could get out. It's this two. It's not at all. Uh, oh, I ever turned around on this radio. Holy smokes. It's because the two positions make me think they are involved in certain circuits when in fact they really aren't. So I got this right. 6K, 6L, 6K, 6H6. This 6H6 thing is part of this scheme down here. 6H7 oscillator control. That's right. This is part of what varies the oscillator slightly. And that, that would be this guy down here. So I'm on the other 6J7. So I, I, I must, it must be this one that has been altered. So not a 6F5, but a 6J5 here. Can I say 7? 6F5. Um, so the audio should be on the plate coming out of here. Now I think what I've done is I've hooked up the audio amplifier to the incorrect, an incorrect tube. This is the one I want to hook it up to. And this phono board. Sometimes the, the radio output is actually sitting on these I'm, um, yeah, I'm not going to go through here and find out. There's the volume control. Yeah, so let's go here. We'll go six, the 6J six something, find the grid. It's a shielded wire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and listen here. I'm listening in the wrong spot. I'm, I'm, I'm listening. Who knows where I'm listening? Okay, I'm way off. I'm way off on what I did here. Again, and you know, this is part of familiarizing yourself with the radio. You're going to get wrong ideas in your head at the start, for sure. In fact, everything you are doing, you've got to say to yourself, I'm probably wrong. <laughs> yeah, I do that a lot. Power off. Spin it around. So what I did was I, I, I hooked up to the grid of the output tube, which would be the output of the... of the... Uh, this just doesn't make any sense at all. Way up here here. So the output of this tube is fed all the way across the radio to the here. I don't believe it. There would be a long... well, plus there'd be some shielded wires up here. There's no shielded wires. Cheapers, creepers. So, volume control here. Shielded wire. Yeah. Coming right here. What am I talking about? It's exactly it. 
volume control right to that tube. What am I talking about? I'm talking about everything under the sun here at once. That's the grid we want to listen to right off the uh, volume control basically. So I really want to hook this guy here way up here that sound like? It doesn't sound like anything. Okay, now we're going to fire up the radio. My, maybe my speaker was not right here. You can hear there's DC in this uh, speaker. That pop. Not from the radio, it's just the this amplifier itself has always been that way. always been that way. So I've done all this with 200 volts still live on the radio. Oh my gosh, somebody spanked me for that. That's twice now I've forgotten to, to shut off the uh, external supply. I've left this clip here. And I avoided using the clip up here, but I'm going to include it now. I say clip capacitor really. with the clips on it. May not need it, but I just feel better with it there. Okay. Let's hear what it sounds like again without nothing whatsoever. That's surprisingly quiet. Okay, any reason to hesitate now? I don't think so. B plus still on the radio. Oh my god, even after I complained to myself, I still didn't reach up and turn it down. Oh. You know, the, my philosophy here is when I make a mistake like that, I need to be hard on myself, uh, as hard as I can be. I mean, how, how hard can you be on yourself? But I need to be a little dramatic about it, to kind of impress myself <laughs> with my mistake. We're ready to go. We'll now apply power to the radio. Okay, so keep an eye on that dim bulb. Did I turn the radio on? Yes, the radio's turned on. This is not the volume though. This appears to be the volume. Volume up on the little speaker. Sure what that pop was. Now we're ready to raise the uh, raise the B plus. How are we doing here? 116 volts. So there's some voltage dropping now on that light bulb. So there's there's a pretty good draw on this thing. And it's got a lot of tubes. Didn't pop the fuse. That's a good sign. Okay, uh, B plus, that's what's missing. B plus, we'll add the B plus now. So we're going to 200 volts this time and uh, about 35 milliamps. You can hear something coming out of the speaker here. Volume control. Dirty volume control. Volume down over here. Now that could be a received signal. That that sound. B plus and uh, currents fallen now to about 25. So that's good. Very good. Um, play with all these controls here. I don't know what that's doing. That's turning on and off that a AFC. Clearly a volume controller. OK. 
Okay, let's tune the radio now. Sometimes the crap that's on my antenna sounds just like what you hear. That was a little odd. Got to change like that. Tune away. Well, it's not a very good showing. Okay, uh, antenna is only, let me ground my antenna, this might silence things. Yeah. Now we need all the volume we can get now, I imagine. That's on full now. That's, that's all she's got right there. Mysterious response. We're still at, uh, we're a little above 25, 200 volts. I'm trying to keep my eye on that. different band. So we're going to start up the signal generator and get ready to hit it with the signal generator. Let's try a different band. Volume down. Turn the band change. Hey, may maybe the band switch is dirty. Okay. Volume back up a bit. Doesn't sound much different, does it? Band to band. So a band that you might be able to pick something up on would be probably this one. I'm really not hopeful at all. Make sure my antenna is connected. Definitely connected. I'm going to take the antenna ground off. Tune this baby. Okay, so it's not too happy. So we're up on the 11 megahertz band, so I'm going to set up the signal generator here to produce a 11 megahertz signal. Signal generator output. Uh, first of all, oh, son of a gun. That's the antenna wire. Antenna wire off. Signal generator on. Signal generator has an antenna simulator in its output. Ground first. Signal next. Okay, now. I should be able to pound this thing with with a signal so strong that any radio would let it through. Well, that's a fairly strong signal, still within the range of what you can get from an antenna. And the frequency I'm on is 11.1, 11.1, oop, too low. Let's try 11.65 or so, 11 point, well that's not going to make it either. i got to get a of 11.7. Slow down. Okay, 11, 8, 3. 11, 8, 3. Right up in here. Ch ch chances are you would have heard it already as I was. Not a. Okay, I'm going to blast it with a pounder of a, a, a real monster signal. Shouldn't even need a radio. Not a thing. If I got the volumes up, volumes are up. Whatever that is. Not a thing. Okay, we'll 
go back to the uh, broadcast band. That's the broadcast band. Line up. Okay, we'll hit it with some broadcast frequency signal. 1.1 on the broadcast band. 1.1 is just about where it is right now. That will vary the signal generator frequency around there. Make sure the volumes are all turned up. Everything's up. Pretty darn solid. So, you know, maybe I should simply boot this up again. I'm just not getting on the right spot yet. Well, I didn't hear a darn thing. That was a crushingly powerful signal there. Okay. Um, radio that appears to be dead and it could be because I haven't done things right could be very likely because the radio is dead something in it is killing it I have to ask myself uh, how much further do I want to go with this kind of thing before I start changing out capacitors so another thing we could do um, I'm still using external power supply is uh, trace out the B plus and see if it's reaching these tubes or not. It could be I've hooked up the B plus incorrectly. Uh, in fact, it's not. Well, it must be getting somewhere because there's a bit of sound coming out of the speaker. So I like that idea. So we're going to do it. We'll just kind of hunt around. And see where the B plus is getting. Maybe I booted it up. Okay, so we'll use the indicating meter here. It's on a 500 volt scale. First we'll check right where we're injecting the B plus. There it is. On this meter what was that? I just scared the living daylights out of me. Just the sound of something sliding off my bench okay 500 volt scale so it's just under 200 volts it's about 175 okay so now now we'll see if we can oh that didn't work out very good did it let's try it like this there you can see 175 so we'll go up on some of these upper tubes and see if we can find 175 volts or so there's nice big red wires all over the place let's pick one how about this one and we see there it is so we come over to uh, the um, tube where I have the audio now just let me remind myself this set is still on everything is on B plus is there of course B plus is there don't forget it's on so B plus on this tube probably where this red wire is. I don't see anything there. B, B plus. I don't see anything on the meter. Um, but the thing is, this, this, this wire, it's very hard to see here. This is a red wire floating here floating along and it makes a connection to that resistor. See that dog bone resistor? Just makes a connection uh, which then goes down to the tube socket. That's a weird arrangement. No B plus on this tube. This is this is the tube where things were altered. Let's just go around. We'll go around and, and look for it. And yeah, keep your eye on the meter though. You can't, can't let go of the meter here. Is it here? No. Is it is it is it way down here? No, no B plus. Is it? Are you hiding right here? No, you're not. The next thing is when I 
I think is the grid because it has a grid wire coming to it, a green grid wire. So skip that, come back this way. Get a little bit of lighting here. So pin right up in there. No response comes the reply. But without grounding it by accident. Taint taint no B plus there. Okay, a couple more tricky ones to get out here. Now my arm's probably in the way, huh? Down here. Ooh, I heard that. Nothing on the meter at all. You can hear it in the speaker though. And then this is the uh and this is the other side of the resistor off the red wire that carries nothing. Red wire that carries nothing. Red wires that carry nothing. So it looks like there's no B plus up there. So I know that's an altered thing. It was from three to four, wasn't it? Then I write it down. I wrote it down somewhere. I made some notes. I wrote it down. Six J five plate is on pin three. So if we look up there, it's hopeless to try to figure out which one's pin three up there. Oh my gosh. It's just packed with packed with everything. I scared myself. What happened there is I just touched the touch that with my finger. You know I'm gonna turn this down because as soon as I disconnect this lead it's gonna make a big hum. I can get this out of the way. Don't, don't touch anything. Set's still on, eh? Just getting this out of the way. So there's no audio uh, available now from the radio. Signal tracing might be interesting in this case too. So can I now see which pin is which? Well, I know, I know that's the grid pin there. Um, okay, I gotta, I gotta spin this around very carefully. Of course, the tube is in the socket, so I can't see it. Okay, I have another way. There, the the diagram. Um, there's a diagram here that's going to show it. Just bear with me a moment here. Okay, so I, I was getting a little bit confused there, and I realize now why. It's because the IF cans have sockets underneath the radio look just like tube sockets. So these two tube sockets, these aren't tube sockets. Those are IF cans. See the cans? Are those cans plugged in there? Can, can I just pull them out? They're just plug in? Is that what they did on this radio? There's another one down, down here. There's one here. It's also, it also looks just like a tube socket. There's pins. I can see the pins. You can actually unplug these IF cans. I may get around to trying that at some point. But I'm still trying to figure out, is there really B plus reaching this tube or not? Ah, uh, there's a voltage diagram. Isn't there a voltage diagram that would tell me that? Didn't I see a voltage diagram in here? Just bear with me again. Yes. Okay, now we're cooking. So uh, I'm going to stop and put this diagram on the screen here. Okay, there's the voltage diagram. Um, see down here it says bottom view of chassis. So we're looking just the way we're looking in the camera there. Let me just make this a little bit bigger. And over. This is the guy we're interested in. Huh. <laughs> uh, well, that says K. This and this are the heaters. That says 130 volts, 0.4 milliamps. So this must be the uh, the plate. That's probably a P there. See, see the letter P here. That looks like a P there. And then this would be the grid. Well, that's pin one. It says zero volts. Where where are you bringing the signal in? 
here? No, 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 that's the heater. Cathode. 6.4 volt AC. Here, I think, is where it is. And it didn't mark it? Oh, the, these are marked for voltage readings only, so they're not going to tell you where the grid is because you're not supposed to read that. So, okay, now we see where we should find 130 volts. Right up at the top and just over a little wee bit. Now, these sockets are installed the same way they're shown. I just twist my head a little bit to the left. It looks like two pins shorted together. That's what it looks like. Two two pins. Two pins tied together. Here? Okay, you gotta watch that meter. Let me check. B plus. Yeah, still there. B plus is supposed to be here. That's again at the end of this red wire on the other side of this resistor. Red wire which has no voltage on it, which is coming from here, which has no voltage on it. which is coming from God knows where, somewhere way, way down in the radio there. Where else is it going? It's going through this coil here, this side. Going, going through there. I don't know what it's doing in the ground. Is it some kind of coil in here? What is that? Let me look at the top. Yeah, it's a coil. I don't know what it is, but it's there. This is hooked up to it. You wouldn't expect B plus across a coil going to the chassis. That, 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 that wouldn't make sense. So, so okay. So tracing the wire back from here, where the B plus is supposed to be. This is black wire, and it's it's in this woven part. See that these woven wires. The black one is looks like it's supposed to be conveying the B plus. There's another wire coming out. I think it's just going around like that. I think it's this black one. This black one's going all the way down to here. Down in the power supply region. Oh, it's hooking up to this terminal. There's nothing happening here. Mm, nothing there. So that, that terminal is also connected to uh, what is that? volume control. That's Something is going wrong here. <laughs> I'm not sure what it is yet. Something's not working out right. I'm going to spend a little bit of time on my own studying this a little bit further. Um, so I won't drag you through the misery of this. Until I get a little, a little firmer grip on what is happening here. Because maybe I'm making a large mistake in how I'm approaching this.